Oh, so did Tyler get popular by reading his novels? Tyler got popular doing some like Shadowversity hit pieces. That's that's largely where he got his start. Um, he tried to do the same thing with Vosh. It didn't really take off as well. So that's that's about that. Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Shadowversity's boring novel is insanely creepy. Did you watch this? No. I'd rather yeah. just I'd rather just go through it myself. Although I am 160,000 views, huh? Yeah. I am, months ago. I am kind of curious. So let's well, let's, let's screw it. Let's take a look. I'm I'm curious what the commentary is like. Yeah. We'll get a taste. Yeah. See what was so appealing. Yeah. Part one of three. All right. Of the end of any ability for any nor normal person to read this book and not start going. Shad Brooks is a fucking weird guy. Well, that is a weird ass camera angle. It is. Uh, read this. Oops. Wait, I have this. Uh, I do not normally do content warnings, but if you are uncomfortable hearing about sexual abuse of minors, adult women, and men, extreme state of sexual violence, so skip this one. Interesting. Ten months ago. Ten months later. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Yeah. 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 Shadow of the Conqueror is the debut novel from YouTube, uh, fallen YouTube royalty, uh, known role cow and uh, conservative fail son darling Shad M. Brooks, brother to Jazza Brooks, uh, also known as Jazza Draws. Here Jazza I go. I'm watching. Mm -hmm. I'm watching it on your end, so you can just close the stream. So I just have the two okay. windows. Yeah. Okay. Australian people. Um, Arik, thank you. Arik is the guy's name. Um, he is a dude that is famous for being a sword guy, a sword fellow, and on YouTube for a billion million years. He is a, um, a growing more and more and more so a laughing stock of the HEMA community, which he orbits but does not, I guess, apparently participate in. I haven't seen any fights from him, so he's kind of like a guy that does boxing instructing while never actually boxing or having ever boxed in his life. Oh. Artemis says, apparently the main character in Shadowversity's book is a serious rape. Oh, ye. Tyler in writing rape scenes? Mm. Ugh. Gross. Which is, you know, it is what it is. At some point in the last few years, um, Shad did the same thing that a lot of people on the internet have done, uh, which is give up on his sort of like piddling, it's okay, but it doesn't really grow my channel type content that fits perfectly in the algorithm in pursuit of those sweet, sweet grifter bucks um, by starting to espouse all sorts of crazy ass right wing um, bull and do right wing bull videos. Now with Shad specifically, he's very I think strange looking. He is legit. Yes. His hair. What is this? Like it's all, um, if the front were a little longer, he'd have like Karen hair. Look guys, this is what you need to understand. Okay. This is like as hot as a human being can get. Okay. True. You've never been at the gym and had a woman walk up to you, look down at your crotch through your sweatpants and smile. Okay. That's, that's what, that's a, that's a, that's a type of, that's a, that's a what? level of life that you have not, you don't even understand. All right. No. So this is an Ubermensch in front true. of us. Yeah. Very true. Aaron Humanly perfection. delirious where he does not actually think he is a grifter. I think Shad is actually maybe a little unwell. Um, or just completely delusional. I, I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt before I read this. Like his hair in the back looks like a pom pom. Book, and I will get into it. But I think he legitimately has drank his own Kool Aid. I think yeah. most of what he is as a person maybe has dribbled out of his ears onto his beautiful blue or red tunic, and uh, he's gone a little crazy. Um, like a lot of the people in the Comics Gate sphere, which he's a fan of and a friend to, he has decided to do um, the Thanos meme. I'll do it myself. And start trying to make art that is uh, a term we recently found out superversive, as in it, is, uh, it tries to conform to a literally conformist view of, of superversive. Is that a word? Superversive, isn't that like um? I don't I don't know. I I, I feel like I've heard that term before. Not subversive. Okay. No, no. I feel. Well, I feel like that's a weird internet thing. Hang on. No, no, no. no. I think. I think I know what that okay. is. What is superversive fiction? Uh, I don't know. As a subversive work strives to bring about change by undermining from below, 
A superversive work strives to bring about change by undermining from above. <laughs> hey. Uh, they're saying lots of stories we know are superversive, like Lord of the Rings, and generally hero type movies that inspire. This is just, it's just reactionary. Okay. Okay. You um, representing specifically uh, right wing Christian West morality, right? Um, and at some point during that, he wrote Shadow of the Conqueror, which is his answer to, I don't know. I, I've seen him talk about this book a few times. From what I can gather, it's his answer to a lot of issues he's had with a lot of different things. And he just thought that he could address all of them. It's his, he wants to see sword fighting done his way. He wants to see fantasy done his way. But mostly, like all artists, he really wanted a platform to talk about his weirdest ideas, which as a weird I can really get behind. Um, mm. I'm going to read the uh, back of the book, so to say. Off that Amazon one didn't here. age quite so well. That's enough yeah. intro. This book is, like I said, Shadow of the Conqueror 1, Chronicles of Everfall. <laughs> Paperback uh, released July 1st, 2019. So this is like a four-year-old and some change book. I've never heard of it until I started this stream. I, I barely knew who Shad was. It's just one of those things. Like, oh, he's got a million subs. Like, yeah, there's a billion people on Earth. And I just don't watch. I just don't watch sweaty, chubby guys. And around in their backyard with swords as much as I used to anymore because the one king, uh, the quick draw, uh, quick draw job or whatever the hell they called him. They used to cut all the water bottles in half. Like, I don't think he releases content anymore. And he was my go-to now that he's gone. Market's kind of dried up for me, but this was released. Like I said, July 1st, 2019, what? who better to fight? Hold on. Hold on. I don't know who better to fight back the darkness of the world. than the one most response, the one responsible for most of it. Dalen once known as the great bastard, the scourge of nations, Dalis, the conqueror, has lived in hiding since his presumed death. Burdened by age and tremendous guilt, he thinks his life is coming to an end. Unbeknownst to him, he's about to embark on a journey toward redemption where his ruthless abilities might save the world. Many battles await with friends to be made and a past filled with countless crimes to confront, all while trying to keep his true identity a secret. Indeed, it might be too much if not for the fabled power awaiting him. Everfall is a world of perpetual day where continents float in an endless sky. If one jumps from the continent, they will fall for many hours before returning to the same place from which they fell. Sky ships rule the air. Powered oh, so they're by in a video game. Okay. Dark okay. A legend legendary order of knights bears mystical powers, which they use to hunt out the dreaded shade. Monsters that regular people turn into if trapped in darkness for the length of a fall. It is a world of enchanted swords. Oh, okay. Monsters Sorry. Hang on. Hang on. So it's, it's, it's filled with tales. He wrote near. That's what he did. He wrote near and he added blimps. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Tales of wonder and adventure. It feels like there should be another sentence there at the end, but also fewer sentences before. And this kind of this kind of encapsulates almost the entirety of Shadow of the Conqueror. So I'm going to start with just the basic plot synopsis. We're going to hop into this. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Dalis Dalin Navarin. I swear to God, I think that's his last name. I don't care if it really is. Um, he had his children killed in front of him. His children and his wife were killed. For reasons I can't remember, by the aristocracy, just general, the aristocrats in the country he lived. During this book, the there are none, aristocracy. Mentioned. none of it matters. Mm -hmm. It is the most uninteresting world map. It doesn't make sense. There are, I listen to this a lot, and I cannot remember anything almost at all about the way that the world looks, except for it's all neoclassical and Baroque style buildings, which are words I think he heard on Twitter Ladder. and just threw in here. But here, Dalen, pause for a Dalen second. was a guy. Okay, let me let me read this for you, okay? Mm-hmm. My name is Dalen Namaran, but most knew me as the Great Bastard, the Scourge of Nations, Dalis the Conqueror. Yes, contrary to what everyone believes, I'm not dead. This is no jest. Honestly, who would claim to be me? You'll find enough evidence in my home to prove what I say. I know this revelation will distress most people who survived my rule, enraged that I escaped punishment, but I haven't. The twenty years I spent in hiding have been torture, where death would have offered me the rest I desire. My torment comes not from my fall from power, or that I live in squalor, but because of my endless guilt. Yes, that's right. I, Dalis the Conqueror, decree I was in every way the despicable tyrant the world claims I was. I murdered, pillaged, and ravaged the world, all in the name of the Dawn Empire. Would you believe that in all my actions I thought I was serving the greater good? Regardless, I've come to know nothing justifies what I've done. I wish there was a way I could fix things to go back in time and change it all. 
But what is done is done, and I'm left to hate myself more than any person alive. This is like um, if Rings of Power was written by uh, Stephanie Meyer. I cannot express in words the depths of my shame. Every hour is agony, and I would have ended my life years ago if not for the knowledge shining through my soul that I deserve a profound form of torture. Careful with that edge, buddy. <laughs> but how my aged body fails and death draws near, which I welcome as a long-awaited if undeserved gift. I could wait out the few falls I have left, but if I am to die, I'll see it done my own way. The world should be free of Daedalus the Conqueror once and for all, and to that end I plan to cast myself from the continent. I know, poetic. I leave this letter so the world will know the truth. Daedalus the Conqueror died hating himself and his whole life, as meaningless as these words are. I'm sorry. I leave a world worse for my having lived in it, and go to embrace the endless hell I so rightly deserve. If I am lucky, perhaps I'll be cast into outer darkness and my existence destroyed. Dalin Namaran, also known as Dalis the Conqueror, year 51 of the fifth day. Not a lot of years. Not a yeah, lot of that's years. Lot that's of a years. that's a that's a short calendar. Dalin placed Not the <laughs> Here we get into actual yeah. prose. Dalin placed the fountain pen beside his note, which lay next to the small leather bound journal containing a brief account of his life. He had been as honest as possible, except for the parts where he said the Delavian dukes had sex with goats. Mm. Dalian laughed to himself in long, grating croaks. Mm. <sighs> Those stuck-up men were going to have a light-cursed time dispelling that one. A light-cursed... Especially when the comet was written alongside so many sincere confessions. Why would he lie about the dukes when he was so honest about everything else? Because he was a bastard, of course. Just not the type of bastard the world thought he was. At least not anymore. Also, the dukes deserved it. This is so bad. Yeah. You know what I've noticed? There, there's a... I noticed this when I tried to write in high school, too. Um, it's... When you write a scene, there's a weird sense that you have to just keep on elaborating past the previous line. Whereas when you look... When you read, like, novels typically that work... They don't do that. I find there are some fancy novels that do that and it annoys me. Like, um, I, I was with Brian Anderson. Like, I tried reading Mistborn and it did that a little bit. And it was like, not, not that badly. But like, oh, and she walked towards the counter. The counter was made of cork. The cork had a grain. The grain was slick with oh. the film of someone. And it's just like, it never ends. When all you got to do is say, she walked to the counter and found the thing. There it is. And that's all you gotta do. Because you're wasting the reader's time. Nobody cares. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you mean she just walked to the counter? But did the floor creak? What was the texture? What did the air smell? We don't need to know this. We don't need Listen. to know this. We don't even Listen. need to... We don't even need to see her walk to the counter. We could just see... The character just go, it's on the counter over there. Five hours later. Boom. Easy. Brian Anderson? Did I say Sanderson? It's Brian S. Anderson, right? I don't know. It's Br Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson. That's it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold I don't, on. I don't read these weirdos. She turned the coffee machine and cursed under her breath when she turned the knob above the spigot. A thin line of cold sludge dripped into her cup, barely enough to cover the bottom. She sighed, set the mug aside, and went about refilling the coffee machine. The afternoon crew trickled in as she pulled down the dented can of Folgers and refilled the plastic filter and the water reservoir. Then she flipped the glowing orange switch to on and leaned back against the counter with her paper. And then describing the paper a bit. We're, we're not, not, char charitability is not a real word. We're not actually reading Tyler's content right now. We're actually or reading Tyler's writing. We're watching Tyler mock somebody else's writing and I'm also mocking it. Just I'm reading Tyler's writing right now. He set a single massive hand on the counter by the coffee machine. Adelaide couldn't tell if he was trying to look inquisitive or steady himself. The man's gut shifted over his belt with an audible... Thank you, Edgecom, for the raid. I don't care. That's right. You heard what I said. You heard what I said. Thank you, thank you. Um... But well, what if you need to pad length? You don't. You can make your story short. That's okay. You, it's better, yes, in fact. You don't need to pad length when you self-publish novels. Um, True. The man's gut shifted over his belt with an audible rustling of fabric. Grip nodded and touched the barrel of the coffee machine with the back of his hand, feeling how for how high the hot liquid had climbed, about halfway. 
He stuck his mud on his mug under the spigot and fresh coffee spilled into the mug. He and Adelaide used the same indie star mug everybody got when they started at the paper. His was slightly older and had red scroll work instead of blue and they said the same thing. West Virginia's only Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper. And it goes on about this coffee forever. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's the same book. Charter Bell is real. I don't know what your complaint is exactly. Like we can, I, I criticize people's essay work on stream all the time. Listen, I was charitable to uh, Tyler's book very much up until I didn't, up until the visibly mixed child, I think. <laughs> so, you know what it is? Uh. Like Tyler will, he describes things in like, he like, overly describes them but in like two dimensions like in like a visual and color but there's like no texture in his writing if that makes sense like he's very descriptive like the orange glow of the sunset filtering through the window or something but or the green dress with white belt the sensible nude pumps since one new pumps is pretty funny. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. With a wife and kids, and his wife and kids were killed by the aristocrats. The aristocrats. And um, so he killed all of the aristocrats by getting like a rebellion together or something. And then he started just killing them all. I remember more about him killing them than I can remember how he got the army together to do it. I don't particularly care about it because it's not particularly well done um he, he he kills all of them and so then he takes over afterward well, well, what you find out very shortly after the beginning of this is that what shadow or what daylin the conqueror is is a fantasy allegory for quite literally joseph stalin um i can't or, or at least if not specifically joseph stalin just any communist dictator who also did some mass murdering on the side but communism comes quite directly into it in the narrative at a later point and it's amazing this is gonna this is, it's a it's a tangled web of just like two strings so i will simultaneously be repeating myself a lot while also confusingly returning to the same point which happens consistently in this book uh after he overthrows the aristocracy because he's the smartest boy in smart land he takes over all of the other countries basically and like annihilates their aristocracies put a pin in that a lot of them are back by the end of the book for reasons um, during this point, he institutes his own economy, which we find out over the course of the book, uh, was a sort of like confused, half understood version of a planned economy. Um, that's never really gone into detail on how it works, which is astounding for this book. Um, and he kind of gets like bored with power and he's sad because his wife and kids are dead. So he just starts out of all kinds of little girls, uh. which is just a plot point in the book. I didn't think. What? I thought it would be something that was like mentioned. Like, you know, in a Game of Thrones books where it's like, he is John, John the Childbreaker, the most disgusting. If, if it weren't for the protection of the king, that foul beast would have been slain years ago. His predilection. Are you feeling the charisma? Are you seeing the ap appeal? The appeal of what? Which part? Tyler. Tyler. Right, being introduced to Tyler and being like, this guy's cool. No. Apparently, at this point, he has 477 subscribers on his YouTube. At this point, I guess I guess, very... I guess people just really mm -hmm. hate Shad. I don't know. Maybe. His children, and long were the screams heard from his chambers. Millions of children gone in the dark of night. Something like that. Nope. F*** you. It's like the main part of the second half of the book. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, because for first stop, as important of a detail as that is, it's not mentioned for a while. And we've got I have we've Cuba got up on the side too. before we I have Cuba on the side so I can see okay. if Wick comes on. In this book, I'm not I'm just trying to get his background story kind of hashed out because otherwise I'll have to start trying to figure out where it was explained later in the book, and that's just not worth it. He does all this heinous everyone gets mad at him, and then they do I'm downloading him. Shad's novel right now off Legion. Years. So he okay. has been running cool. the government of the world which is everfall do you want to read it always daytime no i'm probably gonna review it at some point islands. though ah 
and you can fall off the edge of them, and then there's sky ships that float between the islands. It is what it is. Um, he is 65, gets deposed, and everyone thought he died in a attack Prime is still from, on, though. Uh, Renarin something, I think. I can't remember. Oh, my God. The guy that led the revolt, okay? <laughs> we pick up at what I just call part one, Dalen's Day Out, right? So he is 85, and you start the book with the the framing device the narrative framing device that lasts throughout the entirety of shadow of the conqueror which is the longest most boring suicide note you'll have ever heard in your life and would make no sense if read top to bottom because it all has something specifically kind of to do with articulating into the chapters ahead kind of it's way too long that's what you read and, right? and it's also not long enough yeah but it's also kind of weird because i didn't I, I realized after the fact my that he took so much time on the uh on the suicide note or the not suicide note but there was actually no mention of the goats in the suicide note so what it was just kind of mentioned afterwards like it was there very odd i am dayless Dalen Bababa, also known as Dalus the Bastard or Dalus the Conqueror, and I have sinned. And you will hear this, I think, 10,000 times during this book. I want to die because living is worse than death to me. Living is the worst punishment ever. And so Dalen, being an 85-year-old guy who's too old to prequel crack around anymore, uh, leaves his house. He's been living in a remote village of people in a world where there are newspapers and drawings of this guy, he's one, probably arguably the most famous human being alive. He goes into hiding at 65 at the height of his power after a coup against him. It's literally like Joseph Stalin, Hitler in a world with newspapers vanishes into the countryside. Crazier things have happened. I forgot about my sweet potato. He's been guy. living there as a tinkerer or an oh, engineer they're probably burnt, aren't they? like for 20 some odd years, just doing a basic engineering we find out from this point and going forward that for no real reason, uh, other than basically what I assume is supposed to be the will of God, Dalis is the biggest Mary Sue of all time. I hate using that word, but this one time I think it actually works. He is the smartest engineer to have ever existed. He specifically, while conquering the world, also developed all of the most major technological advancements in the world. So every like five steps, he looks at something, he's like, ah, oh, yes automated dildo before i grows to power no one knew you could strap light stone to a dildo and make it go like a steam engine before that the nation's women were dry as a riverbed but i invented the super dildo over and over and over and over again i lost track of slash did not care about all of the stuff he made because he talked about it first this is the thing that just assume it happens every time i'm talking for the duration of this book this man is so pink Galen. We'll see a thing and He's not so really describe pink. it as being a cool thing, right? A lot of this is like really close third person narration. Dalen's wandering around old creakle bones. They're in the first chunk of the book and looking at it and like, there's no reason for you to care. There's no inciting incident, by the way, in this novel. There really is no inciting incident other than him deciding to go kill himself. And Shad does not have the skill or depth of like being to make that like a fast, like if that was, if this was like some old dour Russian novel, like the story begins with an old man ready to go kill himself by throwing himself off the edge of the world. I'd be like, this is about to be the most fire depressing I've ever heard. But sometimes somehow he manages to make it not interesting. You will find out throughout the entirety of this book that there is no big bad except for kind of Dalen, but like even he's not, um, he just goes and walks around and looks at, and then will describe it or talk to other people about it for ever paragraphs on paragraphs. And like, unironically your book, your book does not require the reader to be a student of your world, right? No one's book should require that. You should make me want to understand how your world works or go. That was a neat effect. How yeah. is it accomplished? And then like kind mm -hmm. of give bits. Yeah. Every Tyler, it should two pages. I would guess in this book, we stop and go through a his history of over and over and over. If you're bored this? of me talking about it, the book is Pause 18 it. hours long on Audible. That's all I'm saying. So mm -hmm. you can suck it up if I did. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is I read like, I want to say two thirds, I think of uh, one of his short stories earlier in the stream at the beginning. And uh, I have, I have read so much about 
the concentric circles of a lawn and of the windows in an attic and all this stuff that had no bearing whatsoever on a very, very simple story. This is just insane that he's making this critique of all things. Like, over overdoing your back history and just loading exposition is such a is such a common fantasy trope. You almost it's almost like part of the genre, and I hate it because typically it's it's just all very uninteresting. But it's just like this is just basic. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now, granted, like this Tyler uh, Tyler Shadowverse Shed's book sounds like garbage, but. Mm -hmm. So so is Tyler's in the same way he's describing. Yeah, I don't know when his uh, short story stuff came out, but well, the... I think it was published in twenty twenty one. That could have been that that could have been written like over how like ten years even. So that stuff could have gone back as far as like his twenties, probably. Now, I I suspect given the length that it was probably like later than that. Hmm. But. Like, it's okay. you're allowed to publish, like, bad books early on. Like, that's fine. Like, he, was, he obviously wasn't a very experienced writer. Neither is Shed. This is his first book. Um, and I don't think any of these people, like, wrote regularly when they weren't doing YouTube or whatever. Like, it's a it's a different skill. You have to have a specific kind of skill with language. Mm -hmm. um, which they just don't have. Which is fine. You can get it over time. But, like... I just, in, in Tyler's place, this is not the line of critique I would take, given that he has, like, really bad books published. Like, really bad books published. Yeah. Yep. And not because, like, he couldn't he couldn't hypothetically, like, get to a point where he's writing good books, just because he's not there yet. It's like, this is why I'm kind of, like, I'm kind of miffed. Like, uh, if, if people are, like, demonstrating that they're trying to do something positive, and that's their trajectory then uh, as a general rule, I'm not going to like go after their creative stuff. Cause that's like the good, that's the good part of them. Mm -hmm. But if they're just abandoning that and they're using that to bludgeon other people, it's like, well, then f it yeah, then like, like going, going, there's, there is fundamentally no difference between, in, in fact, it's actually a little bit, it's a little bit less cruel. Actually, there's fundamentally no difference between going after Tyler's fiction writing or shadow fiction writing and going after Will and his channel for writing a bad, essay on the Sch schrodinger's AI? box or whatever it's the same yeah yeah it's the same thing like it's it's schrodinger's AI. it's actually kind of worse because like you're actually directly attacking his competence to think in the case of will and his channel with tyler it's just like his ability to like describe things in writing which is not that big a deal that's a that's that's like that's not damning you can get better at that that's just that just takes practice and reading more mm -hmm. yeah he promotes yeah. West Side stories all the time, so I think it's fair. I don't I don't even think that that matters. That's not really either here nor there. Like you, you promote your writing, it's fine. Like Well, yeah. I will have you know that Adelaide is religiously for the equal rights of poor black people. What what do you mean? That's just something that he wrote. She's religiously, religiously for. Religiously believes in equal rights for poor black people but doesn't believe in it otherwise i don't know that's what Ad adelaide she hey she had a black foster mom who didn't raise no fool okay well that's like potentially like uh okay so well she had a she had important people in her life who she respected who sort of put the lie to the stereotype other people in her community were born with i don't know i don't know I don't know. It's just, ugh. Mm -hmm. ugh. All right, press on. Dalen starts off by getting in a cart so he can go to the end of the world and throw himself off and f die because it's the only thing his crickle crackle old ass wants to do. And all he talks about is how f old he is and how f sad he is and how full of regret he is. But in the last 20 years, he never just considered with all of the regret and upsettiness and being upsetty spaghetti to like, confess or just kill yourself before we even have to watch the rest of the book. It's just like, he has just been kept alive, I guess by, by the will of God in this world, which is just the light, which we'll get into. So yes, it is a quote that she, you know, it was said in, in, uh, 
the the foster mother said that she's like i didn't raise no fool did you say i didn't or i ain't raised no fool i can't remember so that you can be forced to read stories about him we follow him to a cart he gets on the cart and this is the first part where i was like this book is drive is going to drive me up the wall because he's missing a lot of points where i'm like this is fantasy vibe do a thing that makes me that just hooks me please hook me right now into this book show me that i want to see dalen be a good sword fighter something like that he gets into this cart uh with some local rube from his podunk he's been hiding out in and this kid is going to go to the main city and wear his dueling sash podunk is like like a middle of nowhere old town hypothetical small town regarded as typically dollar and significant okay I try to before. make it as a sword fighter for reasons. I don't know. I guess there's money to be had or something. It's actually a word, unlike many of the words Tyler uses. I really can't remember. All of the dueling comes up like once at the beginning of the book, sort of, kind of, one other time, and then also one more time, I think, maybe, but those two times might be connected, and then never again. 18 hours, it's 10 minutes of content is dueling. I, on God's hand to God, maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> this Rube is like, okay, I've like Dalen's like you're gonna get your ass kicked pull over to the side of the road and I'm gonna sort of show you like how bad you are even though I'm an old guy Dalen proceeds to just whoop him he just fucks him up because he's such a good sword fighter there's no like great moment where he articulates working around his age in some significant way or shows how big of a strategy strategist he is or like articulates how talented uh, talented he is with the sword other than him just saying get out let's do sword fighting and then he wins and like beats the kid up and then the kid because this is chronicles of everfall book one shadow of the conqueror just is like well i guess you're right i guess you're right <laughs> like, and just agrees and then that's just then that's just it he just accomplishes his goal this happens numerous times throughout this book um they get back in what i was saying would be much more interesting in this situation and i'm not going to go through all of these things throughout the rest of the book i'm going to kind of hammer out the major plot beats that stood stood out to me at all uh and the ending and then we'll get to it but this is just kind of at the very beginning without being spoilery if for some reason someone else wants to get into this okay can we um, we pause for a second yeah someone's pointing out in the chat and i think it's apt um this guy was going after lefties for not dressing right when they go canvassing and representing themselves to the public as leftists. Mm-hmm. And he looks like Bob the Tomato. What is this? Um, Someone said he looks like Patrick Starr with hair. Anyways. I mean, it's true, though. Anyways. Anyways. But this scene should have been in any... <sighs> Prime is still on. Any quality book. Why? Mild amount of time. Vote him out. He's boring. Get somebody new. Boring. And other things you're riding around with the old Kamala swordman. doesn't need prime on that panel it'll be fine be like working I'm writing you one up. in if the you chat. have a lot of skill you should be miyagiing this kid you know what I mean like literally just get it so what I said and, and he just literally says pull this card over gets out they sword fight that's it what I think this should be is he's like already bouncing around he's like driver can you pull over this card I want you to pull over specifically there you see Dalen um choosing the the battlefield I'm for voting himself in chat. he walks around the kid and is like well don't you like why don't you stand there and then get ready to fight me and like literally puts the kid he doesn't even know into a bad position so the kid's trying to like fight uphill out of mud and he's on like nice flat freshly pressed gla- grass and stuff and then he just works the kid and like you know tires him tires him out even and like beats him like literally you never even hit me but the kid just gasses himself out and can barely fucking stand because he's an out of shape <laughs> rube farmer or something like that it should have been Kid not kid in Qbot's chat, bring on Wick. <laughs> Something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it would have given us a series of of really simple revelations back to back in short order. And by the way, Shad, if you ever watch back through this, in short order, mother, stop writing so much. Your prose is not that good. That's just a fact about your life you're going to have to either deal with or improve. So I'm not like falling in love with like, the lyricism of your every sentence. You write too much. Write less. So Take this I mean, this is all. This. this is exactly what I was saying though when I was reading his stuff. It's like, yeah. it's just it never it never ends. Like just just write what they did. You don't. I don't need to hear about the the borders of the lawn surrounding a clearing in the lawn. I suppose. Like what what, what is the? Like, I'll have to go back and look at you reading that. Yeah, it was it was. That's just a preview from Amazon. It was something else. Oh my god. Oh, you read uh, the preview 
from Amazon. I read, a, I read a I read a lot of it. I read like two hours of it. Oh. Yeah. Maybe like an hour and a half. But it wow. was it's like and here's the thing, like everything he's saying could be perfectly true, but it's like you you're doing the exact same thing, buddy. I've read your stuff. Mm hmm And it's not like I'm sure there was a vision there, like like there's weird in it, but it, it takes so long to get to, and the the way there is just not rewarding. Ugh. Well, I guess I'll find out. He also he, he also writes out. he writes gay characters very oddly. Oh, there's gay characters. Well, the protagonist of the first story in uh, the eyes beneath my father's house. Um, you find out that he's gay midway through, but before that. So basically, here's the here's the rundown. So, he, uh, this guy and some friends, one October evening, go biking around in West Virginia to uh, a long, endless street of abandoned houses, apparently. Mm -hmm. And they go to one, and he walks upstairs, and he looks outside, and one of his friends walks into a yard, and a weird, long-limbed stick thing grabs him and caresses him weirdly essentially and Ugh. then he walks downstairs and then everybody's fine uh except then there is a, a a a slight verbal jab at which point the guy who was caressed by the stick creature uh punches the guy who said something's nose so hard it pops like a tomato it's his uh, words what and then they all are fine they bike home and then the kid who was uh the guy who's nose was punched and popped like a tomato is found dead the next day and the police apparently asked him if he had any relationships with his all male friends because that's what american police do is if you're uh were you romantically involved with your buddy it was very it was very it was very strange it was very strange um let, let me tell you like in in 2024 if uh one of your friends is murdered or someone you know is murdered, and please question you or ask you if you know anything. They will not ask you, "Hey, uh, were you f***ing by chance?" It's not a thing they yeah, do. No. Just so you know, yeah. just so you know, yeah. They won't Unless do that. In, they certainly like, won't do that in your living room yeah. with your parents present, which is apparently what happened here. Uh, did he confess? No, because he didn't do it. The, oh. the other, the the other kid did obviously. Confess to being gay. Uh, no. But apparently, oh. no, the, the police just asked this. Oh. Just out of nowhere. But someone was gay? Yeah, the protagonist was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Very, very but, odd. Very odd. Did you finish that short oh, story? Oh, or yeah. No? It started, this is the weird part, too. It started off, they were looking for a house to find a place to take chicks to. Ew. But he's gay. You understand my confusion. Um, do his friends not know, I guess? In the closet? <sighs> I mean, he was in the closet at the time. Okay. I'm just perplexed because he goes out of his way to say, yeah, none of us are really friends with each other. We just hang out with this one guy because he supplies his weed. But then why are you biking out in the middle of nowhere to find abandoned houses to bring women to? That's like, that's that's a little weird, you know? Well, I don't think it's bi ratio. He could, be, he could be bi. It's possible he's bi. I'm, I just assumed he was gay. You're right. He could be bi. He could be bi. That's, that's conceivable. Okay. Maybe he's bi. Well, Unless there's a line in the book that says, no, he's actually not into women, which is, we'll see. I mean. I mean, we won't say, I'm not going to read any more of that. God, that was awful. Wait, so is that short story finished? Did you finish that, that one? Uh, I got as far as I'm interested to. Okay, so you don't know what happens in the end? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, don't so care the, the, with... I, don't, I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the world, quote unquote. I don't, none of it, none of it grabbed me. It just. Didn't it was punch like, you in the it was ba like baby's, tomato. baby's first Stephen King short story. Oh, um, uh, that's interesting. Well, this is, um, not a super interesting description of this, whatever he's saying. When does he get to the What? There's supposed to be a lot of that he that? Apparently in this world, like it said in the thing, if you spend too much time in the dark, you turn into a, oh a shade. Oh my god. Of 
and then you get superpowers mm-hmm. and you can rip people's arms off a little bit. And then one of the weirdest things possible to mention, but it was only the only interesting thing is that there's special shades. And if you're a girl that gets a lot before you turn into a shade, then you turn into a lust, Ew. which is a special type of shade. That's basically some sort of earth succubus that just goes hunts what? down men and men have no ability what? to resist the uh, former victim turned super succubus demon thing. Uh, that was like, Kind of interesting because I was like, I can't believe uh, you're stupid enough to put that in a book. <laughs> he only keeps that in his head. Other people, I can imagine almost kind of getting away with it, you know, but like literally I can't see any other author I've almost ever written outside of the like splatterpunk genre, which I also have next to no respect for. Saying, uh, you know what? What if like a little girl gets sexually assaulted so much? that she turns into a specific type of super demon that can succubus men to death. Mm. And uh, that's like, wow, that is the most... You have a whole book about just constantly killing and, like, your inability to understand, like, the greater implications of sexual assault or, like, have any any remote amount of sympathy in your heart for it is insane. Insane. Well, slow down. Um, hang on, wait, 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 wait. In, in part- wait, have sympathy for sexual assault? What? I'm confused. Mm. Uh, go go back a little bit. I, I missed I missed the context for that. To a specific type of super demon. Uh, you know what? What if like a little girl gets in sexually assaulted so much that she turns into a specific type of super demon that can succubus men to death? And uh, that's like wow, that is the most. You have a whole book about just constantly killing. And, like, your inability to understand, like, the greater implications of sexual assault or, like, have any any remote amount of sympathy in your heart for it is insane. Insane. Um, we're going to begin part three of this here in a second. I think that's a good part to stop uh, because the next part is even more ridiculous, but it's a good part to start again. I'll be right back like, with you. And like, I feel uh, like s- sympathy. Okay. I think you may have spoken for to say the word victims. Yeah, I I don't I don't understand what the point was here. I skipped over a little bit of it. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't understand this. I don't understand what the critique is. Like it's like a gross it's like a yeah, it's a gross story element, but like I don't I don't it's see not that good, I guess. Well I don't I don't I don't see I'm not seeing a lack of sympathy for victims of sexual assault. It's just the, what he's what he's saying is that in his universe it seems like there is a weird perverse reflection of uh the crimes done to people and the the things they become afterwards which is like a basic ghost story trope um i think that's like it's like gross it's dumb does that mean does that mean he's like pro or something i don't i don't i don't know where you get how you get to that point it's like it's a it's a book by a misogynistic moron like a, but I, I don't i don't understand what tyler's point is here I guess you just have to see how much depends on how much rape is in the actual book. You know what I mean? Uh, if there's like excessive amounts and descriptions of rape, then that could get to be a bit much. It sounds like there's yeah, but I think also like there's something else here too, which is I think George R. R. Martin and specifically Game of Thrones TV show sort of popularized the idea that inclusion of that is a part of being an edgy grim dark fantasy. And so I wonder how much of that is is just aping what's popular in the genre right now, and isn't even from because mm-hmm. the the overwhelming like sense I'm getting from this is this is an incredibly unimaginative thing that Shad's written, mm-hmm. like incredibly unimaginative. Shad's being hypocritical yeah. as protagonist killing. This will not understand why is bad. That could actually be interesting though, right? Like that, like your your protag mm-hmm. like a. a a protagonist on a quest of justice while being a hypocrite is, is potentially interesting. I don't think Shad's capable of doing that. I don't know. It, it's it's frustrating because like it, it, the critique can suck at the same time. Like Shad adversity. It's probably all right anyways. I mean, I don't know anything about them. He's, so he's he's very you 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 don't like him. I'll t- I'll just tell you that in advance. Okay, you don't like him. Okay. Well, I I believe you. I believe. I trust. I believe. Um, that was that was like a bo- very boring review. 
I don't really have anything to say about that review.